Okay, I yeah, mean, cool. let's just continue the conversation. But, well, thank you for again for doing this. Um, I know you guys played two shows, uh, Trash Boy. <laughs> if wow. people don't know. Um, and yeah, I just want to find out more about you guys because we haven't had the time to kind of sit down and um, chat because it's like in and out. And then they're like, oh man. And then one time Melissa and I came down for just like a 30 minute set in a basement and we right. drove back. Oh, so yeah, it was, was like awesome. four hours or like five. Like, and then it so nice. severely poured on the way back on it. So it was like, yeah. yeah but I got some like, great yeah. images of you going, yeah, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. the baby yeah. images. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. I, that's yeah. my favorite picture of me. That yeah. exists. Yeah, cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I gotta blow it up to like poster size it's or like big. do like a mural <laughs> size. It's just like yeah. all over Philly, just doing a, a mural. But um, It'd be like a commercial for like dentists, you know, be able to all those teeth, you know. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like yeah. this could be you. Yeah, dental insurance. <laughs> like call Step this in number before it's too late. Perfect but, teeth. Jesus. We've got you covered. Hey. <laughs> All right, so first question, I guess, or just like, oh, I just want to keep this open-ended, but mm -hmm. um, f first of all, how do you guys all link up? And second of all, would you create the name? Or maybe vice versa, Trash Boy, the name. You two first. It's a great name, but yeah. wait, how do you concept the Trash Boy, I guess? Uh, there, there's trash all over the city. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you this know. This is the short version. It's, yeah, like, you know. It was all boys first. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Well, that had nothing, but... From the beginning, it was a gender neutral use of boy. Yeah, it's always, yeah. It's Trash always boy is a concept. Affectionately spelled with an I sometimes. Mm. Mm. By, yeah. Ah, yeah. By friends well, and close yeah. family. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, people don't know that it's it's singular trash boy sometimes. Mm. You know, it, we've been called the trash boys. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's kind of uh, an homage to the, uh, the, the state of our world, you know. You can't really, um, you can't really escape the trash that you create. And uh, as consumers in a society full of consumers, uh, we we are what we make in so many ways. I don't know. That's and also, just our generation is <clears throat> perpetually infantilized by people older than us. So we're just boys who never grow up, mm. even if we're girls. And uh, and there's just fucking trash all over this city. Oh, Shit. it's so dirty. Look yeah. At, look, <laughs> at, look at the gutters. What? I res reside in New York. I mean, New York is trash city. Oh, I don't know. At I mean, least they have trash cans. Yeah. <laughs> trash, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, people just like, just, like, I'm done. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. awful. That's awful. It's just yeah. a tumbleweave, and you're like, there goes a trash boy. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because. There she goes. It was interesting. Trash <laughs> <laughs> there they go. <laughs> well, I find it like the concept, in well, interesting applied to, you know, uh, our current situation in this late capitalistic society where we just don't give a fuck. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, most of us don't. And we're like, I'm just going to scourge, yeah. consume, make money, and just don't give a fuck about Earth. And yeah, like, um, die and let yeah. everybody else deal with it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then there's not going to be anything, you know, kind of left over when we, we mm -hmm. consumed all Earth. Um, and then what's left? Yeah, the it's trash. just the trash we leave behind. You know, we yeah. we all we'll take the trash out when we're gone. So are you saying your music's trash? No, no, no. Hard hitting <laughs> question. Sure. No, no, no. Why okay. not? But <laughs> you know, one man's <laughs> trash. <laughs> it's the packaging, you know. It'll, yeah. It's true. <laughs> it's another man's album. It'll end up in the landfill. Well, it kind of ties into your sound though, with the the kind of raw, just punkish, punk pop, mm. uh, pop kind of sound, and um, yeah, that it gives it that it, your name just. With uh, paired with your 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 sound, it's perfect. So I couldn't imagine you guys kind of with the sound anything else but Trash Boy now. So it's cool. But oh, yeah. so how do you all link up as a band of four now? Like I know kind of read the key article yeah. where you're like college oh, and yeah. then you're like fuck yeah I gotta move to Philly and create music. Basically, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, cool. Yeah, Dan and I met first day of school in in, in college. Where we went. Yeah. Immediately uh, became friends because we both liked Tim and Eric. And, and against me. Yeah. And against me. We were the so only people awesome. in, in college who liked those things. So we went to a school full of nerds. Yeah. Nerds. Oh, where'd you guys go, by the way? Or Swarthmore College. Swarthmore, Swarthmore. Which oh. is like right outside the city. How about you, you I guys? I went to Temple. Okay. <laughs> I'm a community apartment. college nice. dropout. <laughs> so. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the realest of us <laughs> all. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, like, we're we're just, like, fuck school. <laughs> like, we're just fucking frogs. We didn't want the debt. Like, too cool for school. Yeah. 
Okay. But so, then, you know, cool. we, we, wor- we worked with a, a bunch of different drummers that was making music together in school and then after school. We had a drummer, uh, Dave, who played with us for a few months, but he wasn't really wasn't really into the band thing. We kind of just dragged him along. And then after he left, uh, we played a couple songs, a couple of shows with no drummer. That was abysmal. We really, <laughs> we really <laughs> couldn't do it. I got arrested after one of them. Yeah, Dad got it arrested, was, and then we were like, all right, we that's need amazing. drummers. For 17 hours. We were that's in, so fucking bad. Now. <laughs> we were in Brooklyn uh, playing an acoustic backyard show, and the, the cops heard it, and they thought it was so bad that they broke down the door and dragged Dan off to jail. Yeah. And, uh, that's where fucking It was really, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you just drunk? <laughs> Not even. Oh. I was just drinking a rolling rock on the stoop after we played of my oh. friend's front porch, and they arrested me. I said, Rolling Rock, this danger. guy's no good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like there's something <laughs> more to this. <laughs> like, no, that's Oh, it. really? That's oh, shit. It. It was Open just like, beverage on a stoop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Illegal. the real thing is, I exactly a year before, at my same friend's stoop, I did. I was doing the same thing, and they wrote me a ticket, and I forgot to pay for it because I don't live there in yeah. New York. Oh, okay. But uh, and then uh, like a and bench warrant. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy Scoff keeps law. drinking yeah. on a stoop. Fifty dollars would have saved you a trip to jail. I literally, as they were arresting me, I was like, "Can I just give you forty bucks?" Like, like that's want. bribery, sir. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? like yeah. more time on. But, but uh, then I cool. ended up in jail for seventeen hours and nice. made some new friends. It was, I was mad the whole time. It was okay. It's, it was outrageous, but not much more outrageous than every other aspect of our society. I just got to see the <clears throat> grimy guts up close and in person and fuel my unending hatred even l- longer. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And I got a nice, Sunday. I got to really know your mom. <laughs> so I, 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 I had to call Dan's mom and explain the situation. And she said, oh, Daniel. <laughs> my, my mom's very understanding. <laughs> yeah. I find, uh, but, like, it's very hard to... Meet anybody who hasn't been arrested. Oh, I, actually, I, well, yeah, yeah. like I have a rap sheet. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, me and my associates here. Is that right now on camera? You got <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, hold on. Uh, let me restate that. Let me cut that out. I'm so wanted in Miami. <laughs> but, it, oh, but to not leave yeah. out our other members. Yes. Of course. Yeah. So not long <laughs> after that show, uh, but me. Both me and Noli were dating people who went to social work grad school together, and they both figured out that their their significant others were a band yeah, without bands, a drummer yeah. and a drummer without a band. So they introduced <laughs> well, us. Yeah. Neither of us are dating those people anymore, but we have each other. <laughs> That's true. Oh. It wouldn't have changed it for the world. <laughs> it's funny. They were hanging out, and Dan was like, I need a drummer. And my partner at the time was like, I know a drummer. Yeah. And that's kind of where cool. it's been from there. And I hung out with them, and I was like, "Why are we playing in a basement?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I never forget yeah. like the first like band practices. They were like, "Oh, we could like do basement shows to start." And I was like, "Why are we playing in a basement?" It's like the big time. And yeah. they were like, "Are you in any other bands?" And I yeah. said, "No." And they went. <laughs> <laughs> they were like. Oh yeah, we were like. <laughs> it was kind of weird. <laughs> One just immediately really we knew. We were like, yes. <laughs> no, they were like, the you're not in any other bands? And I was like, yeah. no. And they were like, and you've never played anywhere else here. And I was like, no. And they were mm. like, incredible. <laughs> you could stay. Then we've been Meanwhile, unstoppable. Yeah. Meanwhile, Davey's been in more bands and on more <laughs> tours than any of Oh, yeah, of he's got more, yeah. Yeah. more experience Played than we do. for like a while. There's cool. a couple bands before I joined them. But my band, <laughs> Hand Me Downs, actually played a few shows with Trash Boy. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. how we met each other. Oh, cool. And in our house, too. Yeah, at their that house. That was the first nice. time we met. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a funny show. They took a picture of me, like, drunk, pass out on the floor <laughs> playing bass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> that was one of my, like, one of the first Trash Boy shows I played cool. was with the Hand Me Downs. Oh, that's right. amazing, yeah. He was, he was there. Very cool. But yeah, so my band, Hand Me Downs, like, took a short hiatus, and I ran to them at this warehouse party in, like, Kensington, Kensington, yeah, mm-hmm. that, yeah, like, Hazard Hall, yeah, Hazard Hall, the last Hazard Hall show ever, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we were just like talking, just talking shop, just super drunk. I was like, I'm not doing anything right now, you know, I'm kind of just working and not playing music. Yeah. And they were like, Yo, that's well, we'll let you know, you know, like want to jam sometime or something. Yeah. And then you guys texted me like a few days later, like, you want to play bass for us? Yeah, we <laughs> said, here are the adoption forms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Come play bass with us, you sucker. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. It was cool. really cool. We practiced. Like, when was that, like 2016, 17 ish? So, Noli oh. joined in November 2016. Okay. And then wow. we a year after yeah. that, <laughs> we, so we uh, put it's out our first long. album. Put your teeth And yeah. then a, almost a year after we put out the first album, we were writing the second one. <laughs> and uh, Davey joined basically like two months before we recorded the second nice. album. Yeah. And just jumped on board super fast, wrote like the last song that we wrote before putting it on the <laughs> album. And it's fucking great. It's one of the best ones. It's called You Stole My Bikeage. Yeah. It's about cool. getting yeah, the bike the stolen. song on the album. <laughs> it, it, ruled, it, fit, it was yeah. the exact song we needed <clears throat> to finish it, though. Yeah. And it, so then the it's missing just, puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, having a fourth member like truly like put us like... Now, how did you uh, kind of release that uh, those albums? Like, were you just doing it independently and just re launching it? Kind of like record, launch. And where did you That's record, great. actually? Just like in a shower, basement? I don't know. The what first did, album, yeah. it might as well have been in a shower. <laughs> it was in that room. Was it? Was it was actually oh, drums. you actually have? Oh, cool, yeah. cool. It was right over there, yeah. actually. Yeah. 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 And big chunks of the album were recorded in your apartment in Hershey. Yes, yeah. that's oh, true. Cool. I worked for an amusement park at the time oh, during cool. the summer contract, and they drove out and they recorded me in a closet <laughs> doing vocals. We put harmonies. you back in the closet. And you did. Uh, you put me back in the closet, and I said, no! He was like, get back in there. They're not ready. They're not ready. <laughs> cool. You're too advanced. You're too advanced. The world's not ready, Noli. The world's going to crumble. Now, are, are you all from, like, PA area, or? Uh, uh, no one here is from Pennsylvania except oh, for well. me. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, How about you, Davey? I'm from South Jersey. Okay. So yeah. the closest. Yeah. <laughs> right, right over the bridge. <laughs> I'm from North Jersey. Cool. You know. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, wow. Which is like the southeastern most point. Yeah. And I'm from Scranton. Ah, cool. Well, I'm from Boston. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm a northerner. I'm so well, sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how I feel about people from New Jersey. I'm like, <laughs> I was like driving through New Jersey. I'm like, Oh, on the turnpike. Yeah. You get the refineries. I'm like, ah, oh, come the on. The thing about being from New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing about being from North Jersey is once you leave, everywhere else you live seems great. Hmm. Cool. So, <laughs> pretty true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, everywhere is great. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah, I can, I can deal with this. So, you all converged in Philly, obviously. Yeah. Why not? Have you, I assume maybe you thought of like New York City or elsewhere, or was it always Philly? For you guys. I mean, uh, for me, I was originally going to move to Lancaster. Hmm. And I thought it was like a really great town and like a really fun city with like a really good music <clears> scene and everything, but I feel like it was so much cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Closer. Yeah. And we can drive out to Lancaster anytime because yeah. I also like the music scene out there. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. But uh, Philly just has so much going on all the time. There's so many great bands here. And it's great because saturated cities like New York City is saturated, but so is Philly. But like if you haven't been here, what? What? <laughs> I just am really sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> Mazel tov, Wait, what, what, What's in this cup? <laughs> Sorry. Cider. <laughs> uh, once you like have an in here, and like they were from Swarthmore, which is right outside. I yeah. also knew people here. Like it's much easier to be in that scene and grow in a scene where you know people who yeah. can kind of help support you and come out to your shows. And it's like, yeah, I would, don't ever want to really leave here. Nice. Yeah. Me either. Cool. I always wanted to move to Philly. Since I was in high school, and basically discovered the man, the band Man Man, and then I was like, "Holy shit, this is a crazy band that sounds like they just record their shit in a basement." And then, and then they kind of opened my eyes to the DIY world of Philly. And then I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go to college up there, and I'm gonna never leave." Cool. And th thus far, it's worked out. And I actually have met two of the members of Man Man since then, and That's I just true. was like. Nice. You don't realize how you set my life course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah, I, I was always drawn to Philly as, as since I, was, you know, came here for the first time in high school. I was like, this is like a really chill city. A bunch, yeah, you know, very accessible. Um, and a lot of my favorite bands were from here. So mm -hmm. when I was looking for where to go to school, I just typed into Google "liberal arts college near Philadelphia." And then went to the first one. <laughs> yeah. It was like Temple. I was like, yeah. my drum teacher, I was like, what's like a good music <clears throat> program? And he goes, you can go to two schools. You can go to uh, University of Miami or you can go to Temple. And I said, oh, which one's closer to Scranton? 
and he said, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll, I'll go to that one. And mm. I only applied to Temple. Wow, you could have oh, gone yeah. to U-Miami. Yeah. I Your whole life trajectory would have been different. <laughs> Isn't know. that wild? I can't see you in Miami. Uh, Me neither. <laughs> I don't like the scene down there. <laughs> yeah, Miami is a uh, crazy effect. But if you went to U-Miami's music program, you'd be in the same music program. Even though you're behind... Uh, our, our friends uh, Illuminati Hotties and uh, Ryan Reese. Oh, that's true. I would have I would have been a jazzer, but that would have made me miserable. Yeah. <laughs> it all worked out perfectly. No mistakes were made. Musical wise, made. like sound and scene, like you find like what's I like through my perspective from Boston and experiencing New York and uh, like having visited Philly a few times. Like I love the vibe here because it's just so mellow and laid back. Boston, we're kind of uptight um well it's just like fluctuating too it's a little college town mm-hmm. and you know there was a lot of great music that came in and out of boston but it's it's it kind of lacks in cultural diversity and mm-hmm. like sound too it's like all like you know college like rock or something it's you know it's like berkeley oh of course you have nec berkeley and stuff like that but, so be like but you have like the, all the cool <laughs> venues <laughs> <laughs> but you have all the cool venues shutting down now because yeah. of, you have a lot of biotech and finance in Boston just yeah. buying all these properties. So yeah, it's like money. it's just kind of kind of dying. So it's yeah. like, it's um, and then I go to New York and it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's already it's, dead. Every, <laughs> exactly. There's it's like everybody's trying to do something oversaturated. Everybody yeah. has like this like I'm the best kind of attitude and like I hate you all. I like a lot of <laughs> a, a lot of you, you know. But it's like. But it was New York kind of gave me a vessel to kind of highlight, like a, to show, like you know, photographic work. But it was like, do I, do I actually dig the the vibe there? Not really. And Philly has been cool, like, uh, but I was kind of interested, like, how does like this cult, cult like Philly uh, culture influence the music scene? And mm-hmm. I've noticed just like through your work, at least. Um, you know, it's a lot of just underground kind of basement shows and stuff like that. Um, is there any like bigger venues here? Because I'm not too knowledgeable in um, this one right Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah right beneath us. <laughs> yeah, there's there's venues of all sizes. Yeah. I mean, there's a big amphitheater, and that's why this city is great. And uh, there's just a lot of opportunity <laughs> for bands, and more since we've lived here, just more and more bands have moved here from across the country too. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's really mm-hmm. nice because there's like a nice like kind of like trajectory of like basement, bigger venues, bigger venues, bigger venues, like all the way up yeah. to like the Fillmore. Cool, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. really nice and it's cool because nice those, a lot of yeah. out of town, like people out of state like come in and they need ban- local bands to maybe open for them. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. also a great way to kind of like rise in the hierarchy yeah. of yeah. like yep. getting to bigger and bigger venues. And you'll find that like cities always usually have that kind of like venues that like offer you like stepping stones to yeah, like, bigger and tier. bigger audiences. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. but most importantly and <clears throat> probably most unlike the majority of cities, there's it's really easy to play shows when you start when you're just starting out mm. as a band. Because yeah. yeah. cool. there are a lot of bars and basements and kinda just the whole DIY you can culture. play a show every week if you really yeah. want yeah. to. Yeah. Exactly. We know mm. people who do. Yeah, yeah, we do. And it's yeah. like it's a great way mm. for you to like get good and get used to performing like I know I've seen bands that are like I've seen them and they're just starting out and I'm like yeah this is pretty good and then I see them two weeks later and I go is this the same band yeah yeah it's yeah. great so do you feel like the scene here is more organic like from grassroots kind of underground kinda, and then people hear about you through word of mouth and then kind of discover you that way by going to a show they hear about like that that way I think it's a combination of a lot yeah. of it so. yeah yeah it's all it, it flows very naturally and most people are super friendly hmm. so it's just like you just the more you do the more you time you put into it the more you'll get out yeah i feel yeah. like i've found i think and, philly bands are better hmm. live performers than bands from a lot of other cities because hmm. you you asked like how does philly impact the the sound right and I'm, I've seen some incredibly good sounding bands in New York and in Boston and like other big cities, but they just don't move on stage. Mm-hmm. But I think Philly is like, you know, a great place to hone in your, your live performance, you know, skills. You mm. know? 
we That's played the, we played this festival in New Hampshire that was uh, just a bunch of Berkeley bands mostly. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Hate, I hate to trash on Berkeley, but actually I love, I love, I, I love to trash on Berkeley. Some of our <laughs> best friends went to Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. And they so were, we know they could handle it. They were, <laughs> yeah, they were yeah. playing the most <clears throat> incredible, incredibly technical music like I've ever seen. I was like blown away that I, we were like watching this in like a tent in New Hampshire. But they were like not moving at all. Yeah. And that, that kind of was like an, an epiphany just moment like, for yeah. us. Where it was just like, okay, we're in the moving right place. Moving meaning just like standing there. They're playing like yeah. like, like, like a like, virtuoso oh. or something yeah. like they're you know yeah. playing classical music. They got to loosen up on stage and actually. Right. Yeah. Chris's but, yeah. girlfriend was like, I feel like I'm listening to someone do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and 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 you <clears throat> and I think, <laughs> I think if you're gonna if you're gonna make if you're gonna do anything you're gonna spend the time to do anything to make music to make art to, to, to waste your time in all these myriad of different ways you better be about something mm -hmm. you yeah, better you yeah, better true. you better have some kind of mission mm -hmm. otherwise it's just you know masturbatory yeah I would he rather yeah. hear three chords on that stage and watch somebody jump around all the way than to hear any like math thing and like not move yeah and yeah. be stone yeah. face just like which Black. Jesus yeah. Christ! Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, <his arm. laughs> now we're set back. So we're set nice. back a week. <laughs> it's fine. Chris broke his arm recently. Yeah, that sucks. Well, we, going we back to your talking. sound and your your lyrics, it's uh, you guys speak about like working working class issues, you know, and personal mm -hmm. issues of you know working, trying to, you know, uh, do you find that like the city itself, you know, is more is kind of like that voice itself like the working class totally. kind of voice you know it's, it's uh, still affordable for the working class to live here so it does and it's like i feel like it's i don't know i'm a mover and i was a social worker before that so i feel like i really have got to see <laughs> just, it's on the chart it's on the chart yeah it's right there yeah. <laughs> in my in my mind my excellent mind map. And I know so many but, musicians who have hmm. that job. Like, oh yeah, just it's work a big part time. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. There's a lot of chance to like have a decent job here, but it's still like it's it's weird because every every year it gets more gentrified, just like the rest of the country. Every and, year the rent goes up. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So who knows how long it will be sustainable? But it's been great so far yeah we'll, we'll have to we'll have to move to lancaster <laughs> yeah and I where just, is lancaster is lancaster is PA? more expensive oh. yeah. i believe it yeah it's yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. Moving an to hour, hour and a half <laughs> moving to wilmington from here it was on pa though yeah, yeah. yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll have to move it's, to wilmington yeah. with all the other great bands yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know a lot of, so next next time you want to interview a band go to wilmington <laughs> yeah and ask them all these same Their questions scene is yeah. amazing yeah. I don't know what's in the water there, but yeah. every band we've seen from oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and they just drive to Philly, and they're like, yeah, we like it here. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like what I noticed with Philly, uh, just driving, still you don't have these like crazy high rises like in New York, where all the, they're building like crazy, developing all these high end condos mm -hmm. and yeah. like apartments. Nobody's living in them. Half know. of them are empty. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, exactly. what the hell is going on here? That's true. In it's Philly. awful. That's true. You know? Yeah. Too. The, the place over there above the target. You can I'm, drive past it. Lincoln, Lincoln yeah. Square. Yeah, it's like... Filled with nothing. Filled with nothing. I, it's just... At night, maybe, like, a, there's lights on in, like, a fifth of the windows. I'd never see anybody coming out of it. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Um, like, so, like, with the... Does your <laughs> observations... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. oh no no, no. Yeah. This, is, this is this is cool that's what i want is whatever yeah. um so like your observations of uh like say the this classist society we are uh now um and always have been. Uh, yeah of course mm -hmm. yeah yeah in contemporary times mm -hmm. oh every actually since the dawn of man basically Pretty um much. So the that really theory. influences your observations about our contemporary society. Really influences your your sound. Uh, oh, I yeah, mean, your absolutely. lyrics. And uh, where do you get absolutely. the fucking energy? Like, but it's just the fucking energy. Like, what what influences that? Like, where do you get that? It, and that's where my one point is. Is it frustration? Is it angst at at uh, what you see, what you observe? Uh, is it you know where do you get that 
we're just like I'm just gonna we're just gonna rock out and um, yeah. Where, I mean, what's I'm, yeah? What's the influence from that? I guess the the general powerlessness that we have as individuals mm. to change things. Yeah, as, you know, it's it's hard. The there's frustration. Not, yeah, like, there's not a lot of opportunity to like legitimately express that anger mm. without getting arrested. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. like. I don't know. I've always been just. I've, I've been angry. I've my always whole been life. angry. I have been. I've been angry my whole life. My parents are uh, activists and. I uh, run like a long term. I mean, a homeless shelter isn't the right word. It's like m- the house I grew up in. They have they just let homeless people live there for as long as they needed. Yeah. In Norfolk, and in addition to that, they do a lot of protesting against the military. Uh, now my mom's doing a lot of protesting against like pipeline and and the worst uh, offenders of. Of global warming contributions, mm. your parents contributors. Cool. Yeah, they get, they get they get arrested and go to jail a lot. So I kind of grew up with just this mentality that the, the accurate mentality, in my opinion, that we basically live in a dystopia, and that this society functions to crush everybody's spirits and not let anybody exercise their true power or uh, ability to have much of a say in their own lives by wearing people down day by day and using an insane amount of money to just kill other people around the world for no reason. True. Yes. You guys, everybody <laughs> agree with that? Or, well, yeah. or you? Honestly, <laughs> that was very... You know, but. It's hard because it's like even people who like don't say anything like also have to feel this frustration. Like People who even bury their head in the sands, like they absolutely know something's wrong even if they mm-hmm. can't articulate yeah. it. And that's mm-hmm. why music is such a great thing because mm-hmm. they can hear it and it's like... Some, I hate to say, it, but sometimes it's like clickbait, but for music. Yeah. But it's better than the alternative but, clickbait, yeah. the bad yeah. clickbait. Yeah. It's honest though. People it's honest. realize it. It comes that. from frustration. It comes from lack of po- like lack of power. And it's like you mm. have to play this game that is like already set up for you before you're even born. And That's it's true. Like, yeah. This is crazy that I have to do this to live. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that other people can't even do it to mm. live, and so they're not living. And it's just like, just another way to just vent frustrations of everyday life. And people, they sympathize with it because they have to do it too. Well, that's where like the the commonality between us all as humans it's arts uh, it's arts music is a is a common language and we can all relate to some sort of music you know no matter mm-hmm. you know if you're in that like upper class you still listen to classical or whatever whatever they do i don't know what the fuck. <laughs> i don't you know you only listen to violin yes oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only, only tchaikovsky oh, yeah exactly well, I no, well, I I well yeah but i i feel like it like you know these the your types of scenes mm-hmm. it builds these communities that mm-hmm. otherwise wouldn't exist you know and that's where i find the importance of arts you know no matter musical you know fine arts um and that's where i see it lacking in the digital age though mm-hmm. somewhat because uh you know you have the great movements art movements and like generally every decade besides when you get up to kind of the 90s you know, and then mm-hmm. it kind of faltered into the digital age but it's like I, I feel like we need to get more I, I feel like the rallying point it maybe is like say uh, Twitter or something like the average springs you know in you know, spring mm-hmm. but um, I feel like we the digital age we've kind of lost uh, some humanity to uh, regarding contact and human emotion mm-hmm. because we're all just like uh, we disagree immediately attack the other opinion no matter what and mm. don't ask why do you feel like that very or, you know, othering yeah. yeah everybody's a troll now you know well, <laughs> yeah particularly on facebook Which, where it's just you know, like with the algorithms no kind of when you have when you get right. an argument yeah. on facebook you can just delete it everybody's it. just like i delete yeah. or i'm a co- i'm just gonna delete you or ghost right, and that right. you know i'm a coward and not speak why do you feel like this or create your own echo but, chamber but this is why i want to like i love these conversations sure, just yeah. have intimate conversations about art craft politics and Hell particularly yeah. with you guys, you know, you really speak your, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, you speak uh, your minds and your opinions about the you know, contemporary uh, demise of the world. So, <laughs> we try. Um, I mean, the, the world, <clears throat> the world's always been pretty shitty, I think, you know, yeah. historically yeah. speaking. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting you bring up, uh, mm-hmm. you know, t- Twitter and uh, people kind of like battling and duking it out at all times. I mean, I think that... 
I'm talking. <laughs> I have to pee. <laughs> I gotta. Go ahead. It's just, I think, I think in general, mm. frustrated people are, are have more in common with each other yeah. than difference, even across political spectrum. Because, mm. like, a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people, I think, reject one political party because they see it as being hypocritical, you know? And then uh, I, I think the majority of frustrated people who vote for that political party, if you know what I'm talking about, also uh, view the same party as being yeah. hypocritical. You know? Of course. And um, yeah. we're constantly being boxed in, right? We're, yeah. We're, 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 like, we're like dogs in a pen, biting each other and attacking each other instead of trying to get out of the pen, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's it's kind of remarkable that I think so many, uh, so many people who, like, you wouldn't expect to be fans of our music yeah. actually like give us very positive feedback cool. mm -hmm. uh like we we played a show at bourbon and branch and then there were those uh <laughs> there were two cops there who like oh, were yeah. off duty and they, they talked about how much they loved our music and, it, and then we were like cool and then one of them was like oh yeah i'm a state trooper i was like like a police like a police officer <laughs> and it was kind of just like it was like okay all right weird yeah but uh but it was like did you hear the lyrics it, yeah, did you, did, you hear, did you hear our lyrics? Like, yeah. And um, and but the, I I think that in in general you, you know pe pe people people across our whole society I think are 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 fed up with uh, the unnavigable complexity of our world. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't know. So and that's why I wear this hat that says "fuck this." Yeah. So what do you think? Hypothetical, like academic kind of exercise. Shit. Why don't we, as the majority, the working class, stand up and say, fuck you, we're taking back our, our okay. systems? Because we are tricked into believing that the problems are with the, or the fault of the people next to us and around us. That's true. Rather than the people that we don't see. The we're, people that we don't hear from, the, the faces we don't know. Mm -hmm. they, you know I hate the, the people who actually have oh, yeah. power. On our first album, we have a song called Lizard People. Uh, you know, if, if you're familiar, there's like a very like weird conspiracy theory that like lizard people control our universe and our control our world. In so many ways, that's kind of true. They're just mm. not lizards. They're just not lizards. It's like the yeah. movie. You got watch the yeah. movie They it's Live if you've never seen that. <laughs> it's, it's a great it's a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's a, this is actually what they believe. Unless you're Alex Jones, this is a metaphor. It says on the bottom, this is actually what Trash Boy believes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Winking, it's like a curtain of you winking. You should just have lizard heads on. <laughs> That'd be cool. We should have done this interview in those masks. I'm so sorry. Yeah. They're, out, they're in dry cleaning. Oh, right. no, yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think like with, like even more so now with the digital... You know, mediums, you know, media, it's it's so easily manipulated to create that divide. And, you know, and that's how you create power and control power is to create the divide within the, you know, subclasses of, say, the powerful, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what they want. You know, and that's, you know, obviously people think Trump is a, uh, you know, idiot, but he is a genius in communications and knowing how totally. to con control the media. You know who else was? Hitler. But you know, so I mean, he, he was a genius at communications, at orating. Uh, you know, orating. I can't speak it, so I'm obviously sure, yeah. not a, a you know great public speaker. But uh, yeah. if you if you just manipulate media and communications, people generally believe it. For some, you know, most or, people don't have time yeah, to think about time. if this is yeah. true. They're working, trying to manage yeah. a, uh, yeah. you know. A or, and, household of, right. uh, of children. Or they know but, so much <clears throat> shit is a lie that they just don't care. They're just like, whatever, everybody's lying to me. This person, like in the example of some Trump supporters at hmm. least, this guy is saying things are bad and even though... And saying like, that people are lying to me and I know people are lying exactly. to me. Exactly, and he's mean to all the people yeah. that I hate and who also hate me. So, sure, I'll go with this liar. Hmm. Like, I genuinely think, like, not that... It excuses their behavior, but I think it explains it. Yeah, I feel like I've noticed a lot of like supporters of him. Um, also, like love idols too. Like, like I know this kid who I grew up with, and like from second grade onward, mm -hmm. loves WWE wrestling. Duh, I and, knew like, you were gonna say WWE. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just a weird. Is it a weird coincidence? Uh, but um, you know, but he he just has a fixation on these guys still because so what it, mm. is it there, is there some need they want or you know this lack of or, or like this idolization they they cling on to 
Yes, because hero mm. narratives yeah. are simple. Hero mm -hmm. narratives True. are easy. You can latch on to a hero. You can believe in somebody's your fighter. Somebody's going to fight for you. Just right? like you can believe in a war hero. Mm. Yeah. Like you can believe in a war. You can believe. Davey, in a, yeah. what's your input yeah. on this? <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna yeah, get... <laughs> I think it's really easy for people to put like their blinders on and like really ignore like what's happening around them. And mm. it, like happens like day to day in the streets. Like earlier today, this woman was bawling her eyes out, crying on my way here. And then like, I stopped to ask her, like, are you okay? And yeah. she was like, I was the first person to ask her if she was okay. <laughs> and yeah. like, so apparently her husband had recently left her and kicked out of the house. She's like homeless. Like She hasn't had a house for like three days or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. I gave her some money and like, so she could get cool. something to eat and gave her like, a hug. I was like, hope you like, you know, you're going to be okay. Mm. Yeah. But it's really that simple for people to just ignore someone. I think that's, oh, like, yeah. That's true. That's totally true. Yeah. I mean, I think we're, we kind of, our society is going to just had lack of empathy for other people, you know, just humanity or, and also nature. Like we don't have mm -hmm. the empathy or the connection that we used to have, say at the beginning of our, our kind of human civilization, we were one on one with, uh, you know, one on one with nature. We right. survived. We had respect with the earth. Now with the late capitalism and this consumption, we're so far removed from nature. It, it's like, we don't care if that rainforest yeah. is half the, it's almost gone. We don't care if a billion species has right. died in a, a few weeks I in want Australia. I don't care how much yeah. water it yeah. takes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care. God. So yeah. I guess the, we're all going to die because of that. It's the almond milk. Is there any hope? That's the, here we go. Is there any hope? Is there an open-ended question? Do you have hope or should we all just fucking drink and numb ourselves and, uh, you know, well, watch think, yeah. watch TV. I mean, you can be happy I, and watch TV. That's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> that well, this is why I wrap into David Foster Wallace. If you're, mm -hmm. if anybody, if you uh, uh, into literature or know of his, his dystopian kind of yeah. viewpoints of where mm -hmm. we're all attached to just boxes and uh, the infinite jest. Yeah, 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 infinite jest kind of dystopia. Are we there? And I think we. In my opinion, we are, but I don't know. In a lot um, of ways, I mean, that's why... What I mean, the question is, what do you do? And I think, at least for me, what is important to music about me is... For me, rather, is that it's it can ex express feelings so directly, and I want the music I make to grab people in their anger and in their like hopelessness and make them come to terms with that and think about why they feel that way by eliciting those feelings themselves and uh i just acknowledging that you, this is reality is definitely the first step mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know like i think there's a lot of things we should do we there should be like labor organizing is very important we need workers need way more power than they have now i think hopefully within the next decade we'll see a lot more strikes well well trump what? has been systematically demolishing the the heads of organizations that used to oh totally unionize you know yeah. in the 60s 70s right. you know the labor unions were strong as hell you know mm -hmm. then that kind of coerced with the you know with the mafia you know <laughs> but but i mean right. now right. with the we're in I an age of corporatism <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, here's, oh. here's a few reasons to have hope, right? Mm. Okay, so uh, here's two facts. I'm going to give you back to back. Ready? Okay, fact number one the average age of the average MSNBC viewer is 65 years old. Mm. Fact number two the average age of the average Fox News viewer, 67 years old, right? So. All these old people gonna die off. They're we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna progress beyond them, right? The, the things are gonna change regardless of if they want it to or not. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think young people we have to we have to reach out to the young people around us mm -hmm. and let them know to you know keep their eyes open, not get too caught up in it. Party when you need to party. Live chill life. out. Live life. Make friendships. You know, dance yeah. at, at yeah, punk totally. shows. You know, we have to keep our heads above the water because the world will fall apart when we give up. Yeah, right. And also, not that like political <clears throat> destiny is inevitable. Like Richard Spencer is still like 29 years old or 30 or however the fuck sure. old he is. So yeah. we need 
because and he's and people like him are able to thrive and have an audience because people feel this spiritual emptiness and this anger at something and just don't don't know what is holding them down but they could feel the boot on their necks so creating an alternative to that to those explanations to the neo-nazi explanations mm. to the hate the explanations of why things are that are based of hate and fear do you feel a like also response. a lot of people in especially community. in the states being so huge they live in just bubbles of suburbia you know they don't mm -hmm. see diversity mm -hmm. as much as people on the east the coasts or in in bigger cities you know so they they just have this you know small town understanding and that's it because maybe they've never left left their hometown or like outside that state mm -hmm. never traveled or under had that different perspective of other cultures other how other people live and that's why I'm a big proponent myself of travel, um, big. talking to diverse yeah. groups of people, and that's that's kind of what stemmed from uh, for th this series of uh, you know conversations. Just get different mm -hmm. perspectives on art, craft, politics, society, whatever on contemporaries or the, no matter yep. what level they're on. And people but, would people <clears throat> would travel so much more if we had Medicare for all. Of course, if yeah. we had uh, eliminated student debt, mm. if we had paid vacation, mm -hmm. if we had fair uh, work week, fair work weeks, if we, you know, if we had any any semblance of working class rights, people would get out into the world and go to Europe and see these like oh, yeah. Scandinavian mm -hmm. countries yeah. with socialized medicine. They'd be like, oh shit, why don't we have this? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I don't know. Or even just yeah. the rest of the fucking country around them. Or even exactly. Well, yeah. well, it's hard because like to say like you want to base a model off like a European model. Those countries are tiny, you know, comparatively to the United States. We're so fractured, you know. I mean, um, Germany's eighty million people. Hmm. United Kingdom's eighty million people. True. You know. And we're richer than all of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Well. You know. Some people are richer than all. Right. Like, right. I mean, it it doesn't trickle down. That's the issue. No. No. It but, doesn't trickle down. But it, if we but force I, it to. We could certainly talk about like economics, social class, which is definitely an underlying, um, you know, theme within your work. Um, but I would love to kind of hear where do you see your, your band going? Like, where do you see yourselves projecting? Say if I, like, offered you, like, a label deal for, like, a million bucks, would you take it? Or I'm, I'm testing your moral fiber now. <laughs> I think it would depend on the deal. It would yeah. depend on the deal. It would depend on the label, who yeah. else they book, like, what do they sponsor. It's something we've talked about before. Like, we've sent our stuff out to different labels. Of course, but it's always, yeah. We're always thinking, what does the label offer us? What do we need that we can't do ourselves? Like, where does the DIY end yeah, and yeah. the label begin? Uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, we've been, for the the recent album, our friend Maddie Clouser has put together a local DIY label called Good How Are You Records and found a pressing plant for the, for the record and basically is kind of just like organizing contacts for people, like-minded bands. Yeah. And, but they're trying to do more and more and it's kind of just like a slow building process and it's nice to be a part of yeah um, but in, I think I mean I don't know we'll see we just want to do more every time just yeah. every year do do more stuff we haven't done before yeah so see if we can corrupt more we've already made a plan the for youth. the year cool like we're yeah yeah so what's your process like creating like um, like creating new tracks new albums new sounds so like what is your kind of creative process? I kind of start with Davey first because he's been silent. I'm looking at you, uh, buddy. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. You're just like, <laughs> it's like I, I would like to have yeah. equal discussion. Oh, I'm yeah. so bad at dominating shit. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, whoever wants to take and the. I'm just a really great listener. Though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> truly. Every band needs a great listener, or else they that's fall why apart. I play bass, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean a big dumb guitar. Yes, the big dumb guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, honestly, it's just I kind of like adding to whatever like they write. So I'm not like a main songwriter. It's yeah. Been like my bad. Oh, but, but, but you can no, be. No, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Davey, Davey, Davey wrote uh, one of the best songs on our last album. Yeah. And he wrote the first song that we ever got on a real playlist for well, on Spotify. For, for the Christmas awesome. EP. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And. Uh, he just always has great <laughs> ideas to throw in. I mean, what I really like about this band is, like, so, sometimes, like usually me or Chris will write like 
a majority skeleton. of the song yeah. or a skeleton at least and we'll finish it together but also especially getting Davey in the mix like we'll just come up with well how about if we just change this entire part like Davey's really good at coming up with some bridges yeah. out of nowhere yeah. and just that take songs for left turns and I love that and we just it, it's a pretty collaborative process and it is increasingly becoming so as we work more together and figure out like what we like yeah, bring it to yeah. the table the process yeah. evolves as we evolve and as we grow in a band and we're also still kind of trying to figure out what sound we want and that's yeah. also another talk that was a part of us like we have an idea and it's like okay this is really great but is this what we want as mm. our sound is this what the direction that like we want to go interesting mm-hmm. yeah. for our sound yeah because and you'll see like bands especially like by like maybe hopefully like our third album like we want to kind of like solidify what do we want oh mm. but this sounds really cool let's just do this song and throw it on there yeah mm. yeah yeah i that's definitely cool. like coming that we all listen to different kinds of music we really do nice. <laughs> multiple genres come out in our music and now I like, like what are your y'all's uh kind of influences music wise literature wise films what what kind of what what's the background i like that we yeah. all agree on like major bands that influence trash boy but we all have individual bands and like individual genres that like mm. we all really like, like yeah i love j-rock yeah because i'm a nerd <laughs> and, I'm a and i also yeah. love musicals cool as cool. well so like that's a huge influence on me and uh but i love pup and i love oh, like yeah. that we kind of shit do. and we all yeah. do yeah which is really great cool i also listen to a lot of like heavier music especially recently mm. listen to a lot of like uh like grindcore and cool. like deathcore listen to a lot of like scram screamo yeah mm. so cool i just like the complexity and like the orchestrations are really cool yeah yeah and i've always been like partial to emo music just because i like how it's is very introspective partake on the emo music yeah (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, true yeah i listen to a lot of like really dirty disgusting folk punk stuff (laughs) 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 so every every time i put it on in the band or or whenever we're traveling i like hhj AJJ is just the the surface. That's, that's the, the, the cleanest level. They of took play. showers. They took sh- yeah. I like it. They I smell love... nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really love like you know artists like Pat the Bunny and like Jesse Stewart and uh, Mischief Brew was a great Philadelphia folk artist. Cool. That is kind of one of the reasons I came to Philadelphia in the first place. Hmm. And they just write really like raw, visceral, punk, dirty stuff that I think like kind of encapsulates. Uh, the like you know the the spirit of punk in ways that like pop punk doesn't Mm. and that Mm -hmm. i I think that like where all punk music started to like clean up and start taking showers and start getting more involved with like industry and record industry and stuff and like more expensive gear you know 500 hundred dollar guitars and all this shit Mm. folk punk never did any of that shit Folk punk mm-hmm. went to the to the cigar box guitars, the banjos they pull out of the trash, the washboards, you know, the the, the bumming around trains, and they kept making music and developed this whole genre that is like so vibrant and so alive and is never gonna die. Cool. Oh cool. yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna pose a question like digital v analog, like recording or, or do you oh. mix like older like I guess more analog like more historic types of uh, ways of recording the the digital age now yeah. i mean like i mean because i noticed with like <laughs> strictly digital it's kind of you know flat yeah. too crisp <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> i know isn't that awful <laughs> chris just got this for me for christmas oh cool i haven't used it yet because yeah. i've been sick for like most of this year but i can't wait nice so yeah i'm gonna demo the shit out of that's things. awesome yeah yeah well we, we use we do everything digital Cool. <laughs> it's just easier. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Like, but I notice, like, just like. But I do like, I do like the way analog stuff sounds. Yeah. Because I uh, notice with digital, sometimes it's just too crisp, you know, and like, I miss that like pop or crackle, with the, totally. the you know, and that, ru- yeah, just that yeah. kind of different level. Yeah, those the, little artifacts of, like, I guess in, recording. In, in, in twenty twenty, recording analog is more expensive than recording digital. Uh, yeah. 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 And so it's, it's what's what's truly authentic, what's truly punk. If you're, right. If you're yeah, just do your own thing yeah. and just get yeah, it out there. There's I my I play in another band called Little War, and we're about to put out an album, and we just recorded that one in a basement, and I knew way more what we were doing than when we recorded ours in there. Yeah. And I think that I'm excited for that to come out because I think that sounds like kind of lo-fi and rusty, punky, kind of like in the way '80s bands did mm. like 
Black Flag or Minutemen. Yeah. But yeah. it definitely, but it's recorded with digital equipment, and it definitely sounds more updated, but has that feeling. Cool. Yeah. And I'm psyched for everyone to hear it. Yeah. I think, I think everyone will like it. <laughs> we did the the Christmas EP. We did all DIY. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, you find it. You really don't need a label now, right? It, it's like you can record and, and produce and to, to make your own recordings yeah. you don't yeah, yeah. But, but it's more just distribution right more so that's why having I, the money to promote <laughs> and market and different seg, uh you know segments of the the, uh, the states right it's getting the resources basically here uh, we all need money right and and to how do you find how do you how do you guys distribute uh, distribute your stuff generally is it like um, uh, uh, the webs, yeah. the webs, of course. You just but, pay an online distributor yeah. like fifty bucks a month, and they put all your stuff on all the streaming sites. Yeah, it's, it's fifty bucks a month. No, f did I say a month? Fifty month, fifty bucks a year. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Somebody's wrong. It was like, right. whoa! <laughs> yeah, my bad. Fif fifty bucks a year. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's easy. But yeah. anyone could do it. Hmm. Um. We also but, did vinyls, which was actually oh, cool. what the record label, the Good How Are You, helped mm -hmm. us with, and they gave mm -hmm. us like a really great deal. And we even had like a limited uh, release of like colored vinyls that we did for the first hundred records, oh, cool. which sold like hotcakes. Yeah. We were like, yeah. holy shit, shit, everybody bought one of these. Yeah, it was nice. And it was we were, really we nice. We were pouring syrup on them and butter and. Like, <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> cool. Like we put paint all over his and like put touch some of them. Oh, that's them, amazing! Like, yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah. It made it impossible to listen to, but yeah. you know what? At least you have a nice yeah. coaster. Mm -hmm. well, I noticed well with Un <laughs> a giant when you played Arlene's, you guys brought in like most of the crowd because like Kip <laughs> didn't really have too many people, and Aaron, you know, being from Boston, he didn't. Right. You had the the the. the oh, we have a lot of crew. friends in yeah. New York. Cool. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Crazy. You're like woo. Yeah, it's uh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just love the song fuck new york honestly. that's why they're there they, i love i still i still <laughs> blast that every like every other day is <laughs> playing it but that's cool oh, yeah. um so where do you envision like this year going hopefully yeah do you have any big like like uh festivals lined up or i know you you, you said mentioned off camera just uh, maybe going to what, iowa was it um, oh yeah yeah we're yeah. going out in the end of march we're going to iowa des moines iowa and back over like 11 or 12 days or so we're going with our friend and kind of like sister band Kelsey Cork and the Swigs Noli also plays with them cool really they're the bassist is my roommate been very patiently letting us sit here and <laughs> do yeah. this interview yeah, yeah. It's okay they've got but, white claw in there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah all right cool. yeah, they're like some of our best friends it's gonna be we're really excited awesome and uh that's be sick yeah yeah doing Seems a lot sick. of writing is what we plan nice. on doing mm -hmm. as well summer is mostly just like one-offs and weekenders and like festivals we did a tour last summer and we kind of and we went south and we were like it's too hot yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it's also like yeah. we went to college towns and in the summer it's just only low yeah, so it's we were like low. yeah we'll we, do another yeah. tour it like, was a successful fall. tour it but good. it would be even better if we did it in the fall yeah it's oh like yeah hard. that's yeah yeah academic year yeah yeah and uh, we're, we're definitely going to tour in the fall again. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, hopefully two fall tours. Yeah, hopefully two. Fall two. Tours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully, write. I just we all just want to write as many songs as we can in the first half of the year. Maybe like hmm. an EP and a album's worth, and try to get the EP out by the end of the year and the album out early next year. But yeah, we'll see. That's just they're going to split the year. Yeah, up into mm -hmm. nice portions. Yeah. Um. I have to get you guys back. I plan on having number three this year. Hell like yeah. this, Uncle Tammy will have, maybe have some co comedy involved now. Maybe Sinbad, maybe not. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> no no, hey, no promises on Sinbad. Unless he wants to. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. He was on Always Sunny before they had That's that true. much money. You know, maybe yeah. he's like. Yeah, maybe he's affordable. Well, okay. I'm like, I would like, I, I would love to. I think rate. my next. I would love to capture Danny DeVito, yes. like in the cast. Yes. Like I would love to capture Danny. Yes. Um, so that's like that's my aim this year. Is if I get at least Danny DeVito or like the <laughs> cast of Sonny, that would be cool. Sounds I have cool. some really cool people interested in working with me this year. I, I, I uh, I'm not gonna jinx it out loud, but Please. any interesting collabs you have up uh, or on you 
you have like a wish list to collab with or uh, I mean, Sinbad is definitely out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, would be, sure. that would be interesting, right? Up there. Um, but I guess uh, I guess we can we can wrap it if if uh, you don't have anything else. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks yeah. for yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, this oh, was great. Was oh, thank you, and uh, we're definitely looking forward to hearing yeah. more stuff from Trash Boy. <laughs>